Hello YouTubers! How the hell are you? <laughs> this is my entry into the Motor Vlog Alliance May Challenge. <laughs> what my dream ride would be. Now to explain the importance of this ride, I need to give you a bit of an history lesson. <laughs> From me, you know. <laughs> Right, when motorcycles and autom automobiles were first being invented, the UK were scared stiff of, of uh, engines. We were all horse riders and cart drivers and shit. <laughs> so they brought out a, rec a legislation called the Red Flag Law. <laughs> and what it basically meant was anyone that's fucking Albert riding. <coughs> or driving a car had to have at least three people operating it <laughs> and, a, and a, someone walking walking in front with a red flag this went on for quite some time and then in 1889 they abolished the Red Flag Act and brought in a national speed limit. Don't you laugh, Americans, because in 1889, Pennsylvania tried to fucking pass the same bill, Red Flag Act. Only theirs, <laughs> get this, theirs was even dafter because they had to, if they saw an horse or a carriage, they had to stop immediately and dismantle the fucker and hide it behind the bush, I shit you not. Luckily, <laughs> it didn't get passed in the end, but they were trying. <laughs> Imagine not having to dismantle your bike. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. Yeah, so 1889, they brought in a 20 mile an hour law. Now that included any future racing events that were planned. So, little island in the Irish Sea, just off Liverpool, called the Island Man. Thought of a great idea <laughs> to bring in tourists and more money in, onto the island. It was a farming island at the time. They decided to start holding races because they if you, as you may not know, have their own government, so they're not abided to our laws in totality. So they decided to start holding races <laughs> without the 20 mile an hour speed limit law. Well, as you can imagine, that was a very fucking popular move. Very popular move. <laughs> and thus, the TT, the tourist trophy, was born. This race has been, been raced for 110 years so far and out of those 110 years it's missed having a race on twice and that was because of the Second World War. At one stage the TT race was the British leg of the superbike but because it's so lethal a lot of riders didn't like being forced to ride it by the, the teams. and. Rightly so, I mean, if you don't want to ride the TT, you shouldn't be forced to, I mean, it's, it's lethal. Now this was all brought to a head by someone called Agostini, who point blank refused to fucking race it anymore. And thus the TT lost its British GP privileges and it lost all of its major teams pl playing there. Now you'd think that would be the end. <laughs> no, no, no. With all the major teams leaving, it opened uh, a doorway for privateers to have a go. Along comes one guy by the name of Joey Dunlop, a little known Irish lad, honed his craft on the Irish circuits. Now in his first year he won fuck all. He came, I think it was 16th, 13th or 16th. Second year, he won it. Now you've got to imagine, this is a race where even the, the best say it takes at least three years 
to learn the course, at least. And that's just to learn the corners before you're doing it at speed. Joey Dunlop did it in two years and won it. What an achievement. He then went on to fucking win another 26, another 25 of them. But that's beside the point. Because he was a nobody, he started making everyone think, oh fucking hell, maybe we should all have a go. Maybe it's, it's an open option for us all. Now me, my perfect tour, my perfect ride, would be to ride the full 37 and a half mile course, the Stafewell Mountain course. Because I've grown up with the TT, it's, it's the best motor racing event in the world, bar none in my opinion. So I grew up watching Joey Dunlop, Joey Dunlop. and my love affair with the TT is born. Believe it or not, it's not cheap to go, <laughs> even though the spectating is free. As you may, not be, may, may or may not be aware, the, the, the TT is held over a two week period. First week being practice week, split with a weekend, second week being race week. What you didn't know, what, what you may not know, is on the Sunday, they open the track up to everybody. So you can actually ride the track. Now, unfortunately, there's a few deaths every year on this as well, because people overstretch their own capabilities. Now, me personally, I hate that fucking car. I always, think, I always think it's coming at me. I wouldn't be riding it at fast speeds. I just want to ride it. I want to say I've been and I've ridden it and I've, I've enjoyed it. So, yeah, I just want to ride it. I don't want to actually, as you can tell, I mean, 37 and a half miles and the lap record <laughs> is held by Michael Dunlop at the moment and it was on an S1000RR and he's currently at... 133.35 miles per hour average speed over six laps. Average. Average. Let me rephrase that. Average. Wow. 133 mile an hour for an average. It makes me think they must need a fucking crane to put them on with the size of the humongous, humongous bollocks. <laughs> I'm surprised they're not having to hang them over the side of the fucking bike or throw them over the shoulder while they ride. <laughs> Big bollocks hanging over there. <laughs> but it's awe inspiring. Would I do it at that speed? No, would I fuck? <laughs> would I fuck? Oh, I ship myself 50 mile an hour. <laughs> but yeah, the thing is, I mean, I live 50 miles away from Liverpool. And I think it's about 50 miles to fucking the Isle of Man. So that's 100 miles away. I've never been. And you would not believe the amount of people that haven't from the UK. And it's because of money, space, finding somewhere to stay. It's expensive. But fuck me, it is worth it. I don't know if uh, the Americas have anything similar in regards to road racing. Um, but I do know they have uh, biker get-togethers around about the same sort of size, th things like Sturgis. So you can imagine what it's like. It's a party for two, two week party. And the last few years, it's been really good weather as well. Go figure. <laughs> so it's made for some fucking cracking races, guys. So what do you think? I mean, would, would you want to come on the fucking, a ride around the most famous race circuit in the world? The most deadly as well. I'm not 100% sure on this, but up to now, out of, 108 TTs we've had 250 something deaths usually rest in peace all the guys that, have, that this has happened to it takes a couple every year that's a big amount of people but because of that it puts this race on a whole different class of race this is the pinnacle of motor racing you show me another one where you ball to the wall for so long where the slightest mishap doesn't mean that you're going to lose the race. It means that you're probably not going to survive. That's balls, guys. That is balls. This is why I love this event. And I will always love this event. And I hope it continues forever.
We have a problem in this country with health and safety regulations. It, it was brought in and it's getting to the stage where they try to tell you you can't do this because it'll hurt you. You can't do that because it could possibly hurt you. And it's the one thing, the one thing that's held up against the health and safety regulations into this country and gone, fuck you, we don't care. We want to do this the way we want to do it and they've done it. But anyway, I digress. Getting into the sport and it's, it's about the ride. The ride itself... It's beautiful. Looks a bit like this, to be honest, guys. <laughs> you know, you got to remember this is a farming community and a tax haven from the U from the UK. So, two type of bleak people live there: hardworking farmers and non-working rich people who don't give a shit. The TT enables the farmers to actually earn a bit of fucking crust because they rent out the fields and things like that to people. You got to think these hundreds hundreds of thousands of international visitors and they all have to stay somewhere. The island's not that big. There's not that many hotels. You couldn't fit them all in an hotel anyway. So a lot of people just camp and it's a friendly atmosphere. The farmers will do things like put on food, drinks, brews, entertainment. You've got all of the people that are with you, thousands of people that are with you, loving the experience exactly like you. You show me where that happens anywhere else. It doesn't. Perfection is the TT. And now we have a, a, a few different races. I mean, when it first started out in 1807, the T TT started. Uh, when it first started out in 1807, it wasn't as big a course. It was only uh, 15 miles. It didn't take in the Snaefell mountain side of it and didn't do for quite some time. It was actually introduced as a 37 and a half mile course with 112 corners, high speed corners. Um, it was 1910 when the first, first time they used the Snaefell mountain course. This was carts, it wasn't even roads, it was cart tracks. So you had to choose which cart wheel to follow, mental. Then within five or six years, they paved it, they, they, they tarmacked it. And because of that, speeds went astronomical. When in, the, in 1807, the winner won with a top average speed of 50 mile an hour around the course. By the time it got to nine, 1926, they were hitting 70, 80 mile an hour around the course. Then in the 50s to 70s, they were hitting 100, 105. Now they're all the way up to 133 mile an hour on the super sports. 133. Now you're not, it's all inspiring, isn't it, guys? Now these guys will risk their everything that they could possibly have in their life, everything they risk on one glimmer of fame. When Joey Dunlop won his first race, he won a thousand pounds. A thousand. You didn't get into motorcycling in them days for money. You did it for love. And these TT guys, you've got to think, some of them were just shacking in the same fucking truck. They all had, all the bikes were in the same truck to get them, so get them over there. Joey Dunlop is a prime example. On his first TT, he blagged a trip over to um, the Island Man from Ireland on a trawler, a stinky trawler. <coughs> and he got there for free because he couldn't afford to get there any other way. That's commitment. And it's not just motorbikes that do this course. You've got sidecars. I'm not a fan of sidecars. It has the word cars in it for a start. <laughs> but it's as far away from a bike as you can get. There's no leaning involved. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, and as I was saying, I've not met... I've been watching the TT as long as I can remember. Usually, with my jaw on the floor, thinking, oh my God, <laughs> baby lamb, baby lamb, they're all fucking babies, stupid cunt. <laughs> yeah, so guys, that was my entry into the Motor Vlog Alliance May Challenge, my dream ride. And my dream ride is the TT course on the Sunday between practice and race. And you guys must, must experience it once in your life. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed me brief history lesson. <laughs> Peace out guys. I hope you can all make it to the TT one day. Believe me, you will enjoy it.
Everybody always does. Green lighting on a fucking street by what we're doing. <laughs> ah, fuck it. <laughs> Shit, in hell, guys. <coughs> oh, my balls. <laughs>